folks, so when it comes to dental photography, there are quite a few different things uh, that can help you achieve the best possible results. Now, today what I want to show you are a couple of things that I utilize in my dental tabletop photography to help me out quite a bit. Now, I'm going to show you a couple of different reflectors and a couple of different diffusers that I personally utilize with my tabletop photography. And maybe from what you guys see, you can find something that can help you guys out as well. So let's go ahead and take a look. So I have my setup right here. And uh, the first thing I want to show you is uh, these two foldable reflectors that I use sometimes. Now I have my camera set up right here and I got my uh, display denture right here on this little rotating table that I've built. Uh, makes it a lot easier to kind of adjust things if I need to. Um, so these are used as uh, reflectors or bouncers they're called as well. So what I generally do is I position them like in this manner, like an open book. And my flashes are actually turned away from the denture and they're pointing into the reflector. Okay, as you can see right here. So if I have it set up in this manner, you obviously have to adjust the power of the light and everything else. And let's take a look what we have right now. Take one photograph. Now, as you can see right here, uh, our lighting is a little bit weak, so it's a little underexposed in my opinion. And, um, but we can see the effect that you're getting from using a bounce light, right? We have some specular highlights right here. We have some nice texture, but the lights is not ideal in my opinion, because I personally prefer a combination of things. And I'll show you a little bit down the line, but this is just to show you guys, uh, what kind of effect a bounce light will get. Now let's go ahead and actually get a little bit more light in there. And the way I'm going to do it, I'm actually going to increase my ISO to, to 50. And let's take a look right there. Now it's looking a little bit better. And I actually can probably even go to uh, 320. There we go. Now the image is properly exposed. But you see the type of light you usually get uh, from this type of light source and these type of uh, modifiers for the light. Now, the second thing I want to show you is a diffusion modifier. So let's go ahead and do that. So with the reflectors, we were reflecting light back onto the subject and now we're going to use diffusers. Now, even uh, these ones are professionally made and I've purchased these on Amazon. They're not expensive at all. They cost about um, 15 bucks or so. What's nice about them, they have the white portion, they also have the silver reflector and the black side as well to limit the light if you need to. Now, as far as the diffusion is concerned, there's many different diffusion materials out there. You can go anywhere from just simply using a piece of printing paper to something like this. This is actually a, cu uh, a cutting board from Walmart that I put some legs on. So if we take something like this and we put it first closer to our subject, I'm actually going to put it on either side and we're actually going to be uh, shooting through the panels like this and let's take a look and see what it will give us. So if you look right here, I've adjusted the settings down a little bit to ISO back to 200 and the light is a little bit different. So if you look in the previous picture, um, actually our color temperature changed a bit as well. Uh, because maybe the amount of light, maybe the uh, the cast that the material is giving off is also different because also if you don't have enough light coming through certain regions, it will change the color temperature. Uh, but you see that the um, in this particular uh, situation, the reflected light was actually better than diffused light because in diffused it's a little hot and everything else. Uh, we can change that to make it better. And uh, I'm going to do that by moving some stuff around, changing the angles. So I changed the angle of these boards a little bit like this at 45 degrees. I'm going to position uh, these uh, lashes at a little bit different angle. I'm actually going to adjust the power a little bit. Like this. And like this. And I'm going to refocus and take another photo. Now, if you look right here, we got a, a, 
a nicer photograph. It's not as overly exposed as the previous one I took. So, um, and the color temperature is closer to the one we had before. So here's the one that I showed you guys before. It's a little bit aggressive in, in lighting right here. It's a little overexposed. And uh, I'm getting a little bit of a yellow cast. And this one, I'm still getting that little bit of a cast, but the lighting is, is a little bit more even. But you see how the, um, the specular highlights are a little broader. Because if we look in the picture, I think it's this one. You see how they're a little bit more narrow, but they're also sharper as well. So that's the difference between uh, utilizing um, different types of materials to manage your light. Now, sometimes you'll have sharper lights, sometimes you, I mean, sharper edges. Sometimes you'll have softer edges, depending on what material and if you're using a deflector or, or, or a reflector or a diffuser. Now, my favorite thing to do is use a combination of both because I think with the uh, reflector, you get a broad, a bigger source and the diffuser will kind of diffuse that source out. So let me show you what I've came up with and I've kind of showed you guys this before, but let me kind of show you how it works, okay? We're going to use our mixing bowls with our corrugated plastic sheets that are used for uh, uh, decorating cakes. And I'm going to actually turn up my um, flashes because I'm using both a reflector and a diffuser. So I'm just gonna put my flashes right in there. And I'm using just a fairly cheap flashes, nothing fancy. Uh, Mikey uh, MK300 and 310. So they're, they're about 30 bucks or so, and I'm using radio triggers on them. There we go. And we're just simply going to place them in there. Now, the light hits the bowl, spreads out, and then diffuses through these cake decorating sheets. I'm going to position them at 45 degrees, just like that. And let's focus and take a picture and see what we got. Now, you see the lighting effect is even more different than now. Because we have our specular highlights are kind of, in some areas they're broader, some areas are narrower. We can see a bit more detail. I think we're a little bit uh, overexposed. Let's kind of reduce this a little bit and see where we're, where we're at. I'm gonna show a bit more detail. Yeah, I think this is much better right here. And if we drop our highlights down a little bit and exposure up, and maybe reduce this down just a little bit just so they're more contrasty, you can see that this creates a very nice result in my opinion because you get really good texture on everything and you have nice play with shadow and uh, light and um, the only thing that I might change is maybe the amount of light that I'm getting on top of the denture but oftentimes what I also will do with my setup is actually will use a colorized background let me show you how I do that okay so what you guys don't see is I have uh, a strobe uh, right on top of my desk right here it's putting in there it's got a snoot on it and it's got a color gel now it doesn't reflect very well on a black background and it reflects a bit too much on a white background but if i put a gray background back there it will work actually pretty good and let me show you what happens now you can see that it looks a lot better because that blue offers a nice contrast I actually have a little bit of a gradient, so it's not blue all the way through it. Kind of it kind of darkens on things, which I can keep or uh, uh, change if I need to. Uh, but I like the combination of the diffusion and uh, reflection and diffusion that I get from utilizing this setup because it, it gives me the best of both worlds, I think. I, I get really nice detail and the light is still not too aggressive. Uh, and with a colored strobe, I get a nice uh, blue background that I've kind of made my uh, a signature look for my work. So hopefully this little video has showed you guys a couple of different setups that can be used. And uh, maybe in your uh, work, you can utilize some of them. And uh, I wanted to wish you the best of luck and see you in the next video. Bye.